to Skate Canada this weekend. Tessa and Scott make their comeback this season, and everyone is excited about it. Tessa Virtue <laughs> and Scott Moyer, welcome to Ice Talk. Thank you for having us. Thank you us. so much for having us. What an honor. Well, oh, we're, we're already in sync. This is gross. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's it's good. That's that means the comeback's going well. Tell me how it has felt to to be back. You've got a competition under your belt, and does it feel like you ever really left the sport? <laughs> oh, it definitely feels like um, we left the sport. That's for sure. I mean, the the state of ice dancing uh, has really evolved and you know watching from the sidelines we knew it was going to be a big challenge to to come back and and try and uh you know push ourselves to to contend with the best in the world again so um you know we we still have to get some rest off that's why we you know did events like uh, autumn classic in montreal but uh you know we're really excited for the the grand prix series and um you know it it feels like we have been away but we've been training really hard and we're just gonna have to rely on that and hopefully kind of some of the lessons that we learned in the past will uh, come back and remind us of how to do this. Yeah. Tessa, how, how has it felt for you guys being, you made that change to Montreal with Marie France and Patrice, and how, how has it felt there? Has it felt different, and, and do you feel as though that's sort of gotten you back in your game as far as what you've wanted to accomplish for this Grand Prix series? Well, do you know there's a strange dichotomy going on? On one hand, everything about our lives has changed drastically. Yeah. Uh, our entire support staff is new. Our honest coaching team, our, you know, the city we're living in, everything. We're back to being amateur athletes. You know, everything is new and yet it feels like home and it feels right. Mm. So I think that's a really good sign and it's a testament to Marie France and Patrice, Romain, the whole school in Montreal. They've really welcomed us with open arms and every single day we, we go into the rink and we're in awe of the atmosphere they, they've created, the brilliance with which they coach, um, both technically and artistically, it's so inspiring. And it's really fun to be students again. And, you know, competing, we'll have to sort of find our rhythm again. As <laughs> right. Scott mentioned, it, you know, we've taken quite a bit of time off, yet training feels natural. And we're loving that structure again. And I think that's something we really miss. Yeah, and I would, I mean, I'm by no means an Olympic athlete my, myself, but I would imagine that something new and different probably makes it feel fresh. I also want to know from you guys um, how it is training alongside the two time world champions. You've got some young guns in Papadakis and Cicerone alongside, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, does that offer sort of a new challenge, or, or how do you deal? I, I know you have the experience of dealing with that from, from the past as well. Yeah, I think it is. It is a little bit different, um, but we've always loved to train uh, with our biggest or with rivals. I mean, I don't even think we're quite ready to be mentioned in the same sentence as them. You know, I we feel we've been big supporters of uh, Gab- Gabrielle and Guillaume, and mm-hmm. um, we feel that they've really taken ice dance uh, to a new level. And we love training with them every day. And we we knew that they're extremely talented. We knew that they obviously had to work hard to get to where they've been, but. What really surprised us about them is how good of people that they are, and um, you know it, it, they're really quite easy to train with. Um, mm-hmm. They just push themselves every day. You know, very similar. We we benefited for so long training alongside uh, Meryl and Charlie, and uh, you know we don't see this this situation being that different. But right. you know what really sticks out with uh, Gabby and Guillaume is. Uh, they're so caring, and they just have fun every day. So you know, we we hope that we have a pretty good perspective on coming back and we really want to enjoy ourselves like we we really miss the sport and we miss skating with each other and and doing uh, programs that that we love to do so um you know seeing how much they enjoy it every day and how much fun that they have it it truly does inspire us and Mm. uh, to kind of keep our heads clear and keep that good perspective right tessa i feel like i saw you having some fun with guillaume was it a hip-hop class this summer (laughs) yeah we we've taken a few hip-hop classes together and you know just spending time with both of them outside of the arena they Mm -hmm. you know are so multi-dimensional and have so much insight to offer um it's been really wonderful and you know we could go on and on for this entire interview about how much we love gabby and guillaume but uh, needless to say it's been a joy to train with them Talk to me a little bit about your programs this season. You you revealed them in late August, and then we obviously saw them at Autumn Classic, but a Prince medley, I think, for the short dance, and then 
very contemporary with Sam Smith. I guess how much has, has that excited you, those two programs, and, and what sort of change has that been from what you guys have done in the past? Because you weren't around uh, the last couple of seasons when we've had you know the lyrics come in, and it's a, a whole new ball game, I think. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I think that for, for us, um, you know, sometimes there could be too much lyrics. Now that, you know, they're right. available to the single skaters and the pair skaters um, at all levels, it's, it is too much sometimes. So we're, we're trying to just make sure that we pick classic music that we love. And for us, it's always just been about connecting. And we need to know um, right away if we connect uh, to a piece of music or not, because you're going to listen to it all year long, and it needs to be fresh at the end of uh, mm-hmm. a 12-month season. But Prince isn't a very hard... Prince felt like a little bit like our Pink Floyd program, whereas there's so much music and so much great music, it's almost a shame, and it's really difficult to cut that down. So um, we keep saying that we fully expect that one day we'll have to answer to Prince, and if he's looking down on us now, he might not be too happy with the cuts, but we had to make it into a three-minute program, so... <laughs> Yeah. Um, we kind of were going through his library, and uh, I think we came up with uh, something that hopefully is not too insulting to him, but we love, um, and it's just uh, such a, he's such a fun artist to skate to, and, you know, he, he has such a range um, of style and, um, you know, how glamorous he was, so we're trying to do a little bit of that, too, reflected in our costumes. It's, it's a huge challenge, and in a way, it's uh, the big shoes to fill, um, for sure, so... That's kind of the short, and then I'll let Tess talk about the free. <laughs> <laughs> well, the free, I think we were fairly certain we wanted to do something a little bit more contemporary, and Marie Franz played us the, the first piece of music, which is Pilgrims on a Long Journey, and mm-hmm. instantly we felt connected. We love the sound of a cello in an arena. There's something about those minor tones that are so hauntingly beautiful, And we loved that piece. That was sort of the, you know, and that connected with Sam Smith because there's the cello that goes through. Uh, And, of course, Sam's voice is, um, there's such raw emotion there. So, you know, the storyline being kind of about second chances. And throughout the program, you know, we're dealing with some loss and some pain as a couple and needing to support one another in various ways at various times. And then coming together in the end and sort of finding our rhythm and finding that pure joy and elation um, in, in being together. So it's it's been fun for us to explore that. And, you know, admittedly, at the start of this whole comeback process, I think we were so cognizant of wanting to be different. We wanted to do yeah, everything right. different, different, different. And, you know, every single day we would show up, and that was our mission. But Marie France and Patrice were so good at reminding us you know, it's it's not starting over. We're just building on, you know, the style and the mm. technique and everything we've already established as a team. So I think they were very good at sort of bringing us back to baseline and thinking about it a little bit more holistically. And, and you know, overall, it's a really fun program to skate. It's a, it's a neat program to connect with. And I think there's, you know, as far as storyline goes, there's so much that happens in the four minutes. Of the right, three. right. Scott, you mentioned a few minutes ago not not feeling like you're quite at the level or, or being mentioned in the sentence with Gabrielle and with Guillaume, but how then do you set expectations for this season? What do, what do you want to achieve? Is it certain things that come from within? Or how, you know, what do you walk away well, from 16, 17 being happy with? That's, yeah, that's a great question. And you know, our goal, I don't think um, we made a, sec- a secret that our, this comeback you want to call it that it's kind of the buzzword we're trying to stay away from but i think i've said it three times in this interview i know um, me too. <laughs> i think it's i think we can call it a comeback that's okay yeah i just want every time i want to sing that like cool j song don't call it a comeback yeah. but um <laughs> yeah back to that uh, your initial question yeah. um our goal is is korea in pyeongchang mm-hmm. and we want to be at the olympics and you know we want to keep this fresh perspective we really want to enjoy skating but our expectations are always going to be the same. I don't think any competitor goes into a competition and doesn't want to win. And, and that's truly what I believe. So um, we will be the same. We're, we're competitors. Uh, we like to win. But having said that, two years off is a long time. And to, be, to think that we're just going to jump back in here and, uh, you know, take our crown 
back, like if you can call it that, or be right back up there where we were with Marilyn Charlie, right, would be foolish. And you know, it's not just Gabrielle and Guillaume; it's it's all the teams. Obviously, um, you know, our, our ex training mates, both uh, Maddie and Evan, and uh, Maya and Alex. You know, they've really stepped stepped up as well, and everyone's raising the bar. Our Canadian teammates. So we need to make sure that we make a splash and then kind of. Uh, let people know that, yeah, we're, we we want to win, but we need to get back in that conversation again. And I think mm. that's what we're going to use this fall and this season kind of for, you know, we want to we want to be aggressive and we'll be looking to win events, of course. But at the same time, it's it's just about like what Tessa talked about, which was raising our, our level of, of technique and, mm. and kind of building off where we were before so that uh, in order to be successful and where we want to be in 2018, we know we're going to have to be so much better than anything we've ever done before. So. Mm. Uh, I guess yeah, go ahead. 16, 17, what's the success then? Um, you know, I get things staying true to, uh, to what we want to accomplish um, as artists and as athletes. Yeah. And uh, maybe the results this year aren't quite as important, but uh, it's easy to say that in October. I think when March comes around, we'll be singing a different tune. Tessa, when we talked uh, at Worlds in March for Ice Network, I asked if you guys had the fear of things going wrong, if things went very terribly wrong in this comeback. Are you past that point? Do you feel like now your skates are underneath you and you've, you've got sort of a, a pattern back to, to being uh, at least on track to where you want to be? Well, there's always a risk, for hmm. sure. Yeah. But I think, you know, after a summer of such rigorous and intense training it's nice to know that our base is solid and you know we've really been working on our fundamental skating skills we've built our whole team we're working uh, with an organization called b210 um, for all of our office needs so everything from nutrition to physio to mental prep and so i feel really confident in the capabilities of our team hmm. and Every single day, we're learning to be better and stronger athletes and smarter athletes. So I guess uh, the nerves will always be there and the stress. But I think we're past the point of, you know, thinking, oh, is this this a mistake? Is this, you know, (laughs) are we going to fall flat? Because already we've learned so much and it's been such a rewarding process Mm. um and there's nothing as an athlete there's nothing more satisfying than pushing yourself to the limit and and seeing how far you can go and and we're continuing to do that so that feels nice and i think you know scott mentioned the different perspective we have we've learned that we really have to skate for us and we have to enjoy this you know the process the highs and the lows and i think we're really embracing all of those challenges Mm. Let me do this real quick, mostly just to embarrass you. Olympic gold medalists, Olympic silver medalists, two-time world champions, six-time world medalists, four-time medalists at the Grand Prix final with 15 Grand Prix medals to your name in total, and six-time Canadian national champions. Oh. Why, all of that is to say, why, why this comeback, even though you don't want to call it that, Scott? Why, why then this last push at, at coming back one more time? We missed it. I mean, it's simple. Yeah. It's as simple as that. I think we had. Um, we were very, very lucky. We've had a fantastic career. We've been very uh, fortunate to have the support of our, of our communities, of a country, of, of world skating fans, um, and that's what was so great. I think about Sochi. Afterwards, that was that was enough for us. Really, I mean, we we were very comfortable walking away from that competition. And kind of uh, hanging our skates up and, and being happy with a career, uh, but then you know it started to come back in their heads, and we just can't imagine um, sitting at home while uh, the Pyeongchang Games are happening, and our, our teammates are walking in and marching, and and we're not a part of that. And I think if we're lucky enough to still have a shot um, at a third Olympic Games at 30 and 28. We both felt like that was an opportunity and something, a chance we had to take. And um, we, we you can't do it forever because we will be sitting at home <laughs> in uh, 2022. Let me assure you that. But, um, <laughs> at the same time, we just miss the feeling of competing. Like right. it's, it's so sure. exhilarating, and we love doing shows. We love performing, um, but we're competitors, and we really miss that. I miss the training and. 
as cliche as it is, here it comes. Like, man, we love training every day. We love being on the ice with each other. And that structure and, and being business partners with uh, Tesla is something that I really miss. So, mm. um, you know, kind of being back in that is, is so fulfilling. And in, in my honest opinion, I, I think we owe it to each other and, and ourselves to do that as long as we can. Yeah. Uh, back on the Grand Prix stage this weekend at Skate Canada, obviously the two of you included in the ice dance field, but you've got some big names in there too, Capolino mm-hmm. Lenote, Chuck Bates, Tessa, how do you sort of look at things shaping out in Mississauga? Well, we've watched the last couple of years as big fans. Right. You know? So we've been watching these teams. It'll be m- maybe a little bit surreal, um, you know, sharing the ice with them again, but it's not new to us. We've competed against mostly everyone before in the, in this field. And I think, you know, our focus just has to remain on our own skating and we'll be surrounded by our incredible team. Uh, we'll be prepared. And I think it's a really good test for us. You know, we're still maybe getting a little bit of the rest off, you know, competition wise. So I think it'll be really a good challenge for us to perform in front of a, a home crowd in Canada and to make things official. Uh, you know, we're really back and um, in the thick of things, um, but we're looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think everyone everyone else is looking forward to it, too. <laughs> you guys aren't alone. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> That's nice. Thank you so much to both of you for joining us. You can catch Tessa and Scott this weekend on Ice Network at Skate Canada. And, Scott, I think, I think it's okay. We can call to come back. All right, I'll let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Always such thoughtful questions.